season two just dives uh, deeper into all of the relationships. It tests all of the characters. The tension is dialed up 10 notches. That road to redemption is a huge theme in season two. Not necessarily that they will get redeemed, but the, the process of what that looks like for them is a lot of what we're going to see. Who invited you, exactly? Starlight. She's in an emotionally rocky place, stifling her emotions in order to keep working at, you know, accomplishing her mission to make the world a better place. And now that involves taking down Vought and working with Huey. You can't just kill everyone. That's exactly what we're gonna do. With the revelation that, that uh, Billy Butcher's wife, Rebecca, is still alive, his focus shifts entirely to finding her and rescuing her. And, you know, obviously he needs the help of the boys to do that. And he's not in good steed with the boys. Not a word from him. He left us for dead and now it's like nothing happened? In terms of Frenchie, well, he gets an origin story. What is more cool than an origin story? <laughs> Deep, he's in a bad way. He basically will do anything for anyone to help him out. Someone kind of sees him and, and, and takes him by the hand and introduces him to some you know, form of religion and, and he's a little bit manipulated in that way, but just uh, always trying to get back into the seven. Did you just f***ing join the Church of the Collective? Maybe. You're an idiot. Hey, easy on the religious persecution, okay, new girl? There's some healing to be done. Uh, there's a lot of restructuring and some figuring out, you know, about morals and intentions and, and things of that sort. But for Adrian especially, you know, he hasn't even really hit rock bottom yet. I mean, sure, he's health-wise, he's not feeling too great, but the worst is yet to come. <laughs> Any good genre is a metaphor of the real world. The Boys has always been a show that will incorporate real world events. When we were writing the show, things like the travel ban were happening, or the supposed caravan that was going to come up from Mexico. So we were just really interested in how authority figures use racism and xenophobia to control the population. And so that became a big theme this, uh, this season. Hi, I'm Stormfront. Who? I'm the new girl. Wonderful. The introduction of Stormfront initially, I think she kind of is excited by this new rebellious energy within the Seven. Stormfront is not interested in any nonsense, and she thinks of Starlight as a little bit of nonsense. Look, I am with you, sister, but first we have to go get the terrorist, okay? I think Stormfront behaves the way Starlight wishes she could behave and didn't know it was an option as a part of the Seven. So I think that's inspiring to her. But I think the more she learns about Stormfront, the more she realizes she wants nothing to do with her. When she becomes aware that Stormfront is also wearing a mask and she becomes privy to what's lurking underneath, she's not as excited about her presence. Stormfront really comes in uh, as a disruptor. And she sort of represents new media. She's a star of social media. And in a lot of ways, the seven are dinosaurs. They're very much like in the George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts level of old school fame. I'm just trying to help. Really? I think the secret's out. Stormfront is a bad guy. She uh, comes into the Seven and uh, comes straight after Homelander um, and his position in the Seven, and I think she rivals him in both strength and diabolicalness. Don't be a pussy. Laser my f***ing tits. She's powerful, and she definitely presents a challenge for him on multiple levels. When he's in the room, he sort of uses that as a threat, you know, at all, at all times, that he could, you know, obviously, like, Snap your neck. Every show needs its apex predator. Homelander is the apex predator of, of the show. So yeah, I think characters like Stormfront come in and really challenge him, but he is definitely the bad guy uh, uh, of the show. As far as anyone in the boys challenging him, uh, who knows? You know, they may have to get a little bit of a hit of Compound V at some point, but as long as their heads don't blow up when they do that, then um, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Homelander is very powerful. I'm not sure if Kimiko can take him down on her own, although she's got a whole lot of wrath and revenge on her mind. I wouldn't be surprised if she can claw him out. This season does have some unexpected pair-ups. I really enjoyed 
uh, getting the opportunity to work with Aaron Moriarty and, and Starlight. The last time we saw Starlight and Butcher together, he was shooting her in the chest. <laughs> the only reason why they would team up would have to be a really strong reason, and it would have to be the one thing that connects them. So I'll let everyone fill in the gaps. Hands in the air, like you just don't care. <laughs> Kill. We are going to get some special cameos of interesting characters from the comic book, from the original comic book, which is super, super cool. Terror, Butcher's dog from the comics, is in this uh, uh, season of The Boys in, a, in a, a bigger way. We brought it back for one because the fans really were demanding it. We definitely uh, get a bit of terror action in season two, and Jack Quaid really bears the brunt of that one. Great. Cool. He got up close and personal with uh, uh, Terra's pig, which is, you know, the pig that he humps. And uh, let's just say that uh, Jack's skins never looked more beautiful. Are you f***ing with us? It was almost impossible to shoot, um, especially getting that dog to like hump on command. Very difficult. For some reason or another, uh, I was the only one in the room with the dog. Uh, the trainers couldn't be there. I had to convince this dog to uh, hump this pig and uh, the dog's Trigger phrase, like the phrase you use in training, was the word boner. Shit. This exists somewhere. It's just me on camera uh, just going up to this dog and being like, hey, hey, boner, boner, holding out the f up. <laughs> We're just going to pretend like this is normal? I was kind of playing around in my hands uh, with the doll or whatever, because I thought that the animal he was going to hump was a stuffed parrot. That's what it was in the script. So I was like, when's the parrot going to be here? And then the trainers are like, no, that's the actual pig that he humps. <laughs> so it was, oh, it was gross. I can talk about f***ing pig all day. I'm good. <laughs> Our show is kind of a satire, and uh, we flipped the entire genre. You'll see and hear perspective from superheroes and, and things that we've seen before the boys, and now it, it kind of just makes you wonder, like, nah, he wouldn't really do that. This has kind of broadened my mindset on what these characters could actually be thinking. Every superhero universe has its own majesty and its own mystique and I still am a fan. I still have other superheroes that inspire Mother's Milk, who I am within the team. They inspire me to continue to push and, and find other ways to play him. We're all playing different sports, but ultimately we're all athletes, and without them, there is no us. Um, so, you know, I've, I've got nothing but respect for those guys. I just, if I'm honest, like, uh, I love playing the bad version of, of those characters, and uh, no regrets over here. Uh, the Deep would win, obviously. I mean, there's no question about it, you know? There's just no question about it. A-Train would win, too. It's debatable who's going to be faster, but what I know about A-Train is that he's he's sh uh, stronger. He's, you know, so like in a fight, once they actually do clash, I think A-Train, he's clearly grown up eating his walnuts. Like, he's, he's pretty strong. If I had to choose who would win in a fight, Katana or Kimiko? It's hard to say because they both have powers and Kimiko can heal herself, but what if she's already trapped in Katana's sword? Ooh, Homelander versus Superman. I'd just take some hostages, start trying to kill people, and he'd feel, the, he'd feel obligated to save them and uh, lower his guard, and uh, at some point Homelander would take him out. 